We want to welcome our online family to Jesus Image Church. We want to welcome everyone here. And I hope that you guys have come expectant tonight because the Lord is going to pour out His glory upon this house like never before. So prepare your hearts to receive what you've come here for. If you come here for a healing, believe it by faith. He's going to do it. So come, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome your presence. Come and pour out upon our hungry hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's lift our voices tonight and give him praise. Oh, we sing your praise. There we lift up the name of Jesus. There is no one like of the name of Jesus. Come on in your own song, in your own words, begin to give him praise. We exalt the name of Jesus tonight. There's no one like you, there's none beside you. Yeah. in just a little bit more tonight. Oh, leave the weight on the Lord. We'll mount up on wings like eagles. So we wait on you. We wait on you. Yeah. Oh. Oh. We wait. We wait on you. We wait. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, Let's seal it 
tonight we sing Amen Every voice and we sing Amen Every voice and we cry Amen Lift up your voice tonight sing
reconcile the lost For the hope that all creation You did not despise the cross For even in your suffering You saw to the other side Knowing this was our salvation Jesus, for our sake you died yeah.
and praise in this place for all that our God has done. Yeah. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life Oh, praise the name 
and just keep singing that.
want to read this scripture over you. It's Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all that they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. He's so faithful. We love you, Jesus. Just tell him you love him for a moment. We love you, Jesus. You are so faithful, God. You are so faithful, God. You are so good, Jesus. So faithful. How we need you, Jesus. We love you, God. We worship you tonight, King of kings and Lord of lords. We proclaim your majesty tonight, Jesus. We proclaim your beautiful God. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your holy name, God. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross, Lord. Thank you, God. You didn't leave us as orphans, God. You never leave us, God. You never leave your children. You never forsake us, God. And we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for the blood that was shed, God. Thank you, Father, that you bore our sickness, God, and our disease on the cross, Jesus. We thank you, Father. You are all together lovely, Jesus. You are all together lovely. We give you this night, God. We say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Just say that. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give it up for the amazing worship team tonight. Wow. My goodness. I want to um, welcome my brother-in-law and sister, Alicia, on Jesus Image staff. That was just... Beautiful, beautiful. They moved here recently from Tampa, Florida, and they said, we want to raise our children in the presence of the Lord, and we're so happy to have you on the team. God is going to do great things tonight. Choir, I know you have a special in a moment, so you guys can just stay right there and intercede. <laughs> I'm joking. We love you. You guys can be seated. We have an amazing night in store for you tonight. I'm going to take the offering here in just a moment, but I just wanted to fill you guys in on just uh, Michael's voice. I know so many of you have been praying for him, and we thank you so much. I filled in our morning service, but he has some hemorrhaging on his vocal cords from overuse and misuse, and God has sent, it, he sent us a great team of doctors and people that have just been helping us all along the way. And so he has to get surgery the beginning of March. We're believing that the Lord is going to heal him. Amen. But we had our first visit with the doctor. We didn't know that he was a believer. And he looked at Michael and he goes, you will fulfill the call of God on your life. And we said, you know what? We like you. You'll be our doctor. And we found out that he used to be on the mission field with Franklin Graham. And he is a born-again believer. And as soon as this uh, surgery is over, Michael will be better than ever. He said, your voice is going to be stronger than... Yeah, you can clap for that. He said, your voice is going to be stronger than ever before. So it will be a quick recovery. And he will be back here preaching very soon. Amen. So thank you again for your prayers. We feel them. We love you. And we believe that God is going to do great things. And tonight we're having a healing service. So just come in faith. If you're watching online and you need a healing in your body, I believe is God is just going to touch people all over the world that are watching and in this room. God is above all, and he is the healer. It's who he is. He doesn't just heal. He is healing. So I know God is going to touch us tonight, but let me get to offering real quick. All right. Go to Genesis 28. Go to verse 12 through 13. And I'm also going to read out of verse 16, 18, and 22. I'm going to skip it just a little bit because it's a long passage. But again, Genesis 28, 12 through 13 is where I'm going to start. 
And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, As he slept, he dreamt of a stairway that reached from the earth up to the heaven, and he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you and your descendants. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. The next morning, Jacob got up very early. Listen, he took the stone he had rested his head against, and he set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. At this memorial pillar, I have set what I have set up will become a place for worshiping God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. Say a tenth. That's a tithe. Before these promises came to pass, Jacob already decided in his heart, I'm going to give God a tenth and even more than all that he gives me. We give God a tenth because that is our tithe. It is our first fruits. That's when Michael and I get a paycheck, we don't take anything first. We give it first to the Lord because it is his. And the Bible says in Malachi, you robbed me in your tithes and your offerings. So we have to give our tithe, but also our offering to the Lord. And I love this. See, Jacob here did it in what most people would say is reverse. Sometimes we wait for God to bless us, and then we say, now we're going to give God what is due to him. No, no. Jacob did it the other way around. He goes, I'm going to bless God because I know his word is yes and amen. Amen? Amen. So just be faithful to the Lord because he's given you so much. He gave you his life. And it's our joy to obey Jesus. Amen? So let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this night, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you will speak to your children right now, Lord. It is our joy to give to you, God. You've given us so much. You gave us your son, Jesus. So, Lord, it is our joy and honor to give back to you what already belongs to you. And thank you, God, for all you have done for your children. In Jesus' name, amen. You can text GIVE to the number on your screen. We also have a QR code. You could also just hold your phone. Technology nowadays is amazing. You can just hold your phone right there, and the link will come up. If you're watching online, we love our online, online family so very much. If Jesus' image has blessed you and you want to give, you can text GIVE to the number on your screen. If you need an envelope, will you just raise your hands and keep them up high? And one of our ushers will come and give you an envelope. You are free to rush the buckets. We'll be right back.
just one chief and two men's purpose In one thing reason for existence Romans vain and high ambition Will one day be part No.
love you guys. All right. And Pastor Wally, thank you so much for all that you do. No one like him. We are so honored just to know all of you. My goodness. All right. So my dad is here with us tonight. We are so honored to have him. What a blessing he has been to Michael. He's been filling in for Michael at Jesus School. We call him Substitute Hen. Um, and he said, I want to come. I want to pray for the sick and teach on faith and healing. So I just cannot wait to see what God is going to do tonight. And Bruce, since you're up here, we love you too, Bruce. All right. He's coming. And Maurice, love you, Maurice. Haven't seen you since, since I was little. Thank you. You're all so kind. Thank you. Take your seats. Thank you. I always love coming here. My favorite place. Michael, you look marvelous. No, you look marvelous. Bruce, thank you. Do we have a chair for dear Maurice? Maybe we can get you a chair, my dear brother. This is Maurice Scalar. He's a fabulous violinist. So if we can get him a chair up here, thank you. All right. I don't want you sitting on that. I'm glad you're wearing your kippah. Looks like a rabbi. In fact, you are a rabbi. So am I, without the keeper. Well, you sweet people, I'm so excited to be with you. And I'm really excited too that my family is working together. Welcome to David and Lily. So, my amazing Michael, he is amazing. I call him, now look, look, I've known him since he was 12. 12, right? Yeah. He got saved in OCC when he was 12, and I would always say, where are my boys? And he'd come running down the aisle. And I think once or twice you had a white suit on. It was him and his cousin, I think, Theo, right? Oh, your brother, your brother, yeah. And uh, who thought that God would do all this with Michael and Jessica? And everywhere I go, they talk about you. They're watching you all over the place. I'm so proud of my precious Jess. She really... <laughs> Thank you. I tell her, I said, you are my pride and joy. And she has changed. I mean, I watch her. In fact, I was watching uh, last Sunday morning, and I watched some this morning. And then, uh, but every, you know, every time I watch, I'm thinking, I can't believe this. This is my baby when she was 14. I got to show them that picture one day. <laughs> I had her come to a crusade, and she did not like it. And on the platform, you can see she was really upset. Like, mm, you know. <laughs> but things have changed, thank God. The only thing I wish you would change still <laughs> is those holy pants. 
Like, what do you get out of these? Lily, you too. Oh, dear God. Well, this is a healing service, and I'm going to pray for you. And God will heal both of you from this. Look, whatever. Well, listen, uh, in just a little bit, I'm going to show you a beautiful miracle. We were looking for one from Sacramento that really lifts faith, and we could not find it. But anyways, uh, I'm going to show you a little clip about five minutes because I really believe the Lord is going to heal many tonight. Because, you know, we cannot forget He is our healer. And no matter what sickness is in your life, it doesn't matter. So can we stand up and thank Him? Mighty God we serve. Mighty God, saints. Lift your hands and thank Him for His mercies. Blessed be your name, Lord. You're the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, sweet, darling Jesus. And we come in his name tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you. We thank you. That you answer prayer. You said, come on to me, all you who labor. I'll give you rest. You also said, call on to me and I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. What a privilege. Amazing, amazing privilege. Give you all the praise today. And your people have come expecting. They've come believing. For we know there is nothing impossible with you. The word impossible does not exist with you. You are God Almighty. And your people have come, many of them watching in their homes, who are sick in body, troubled in mind, troubled in their souls. But you promised. You said, I will heal thee of all thy wounds, and I will restore health unto thee. That's your promise. And there's power in your holy name, mighty power in your name. And that's why, Lord, we can ask in faith, knowing all things are possible. And I pray those who've come tonight with sickness in their body will leave that sickness behind and leave whole, totally whole. And Jesus, that's a blessing. Jesus, Jesus. There is something about that name, Master, Master, Savior, Jesus, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, 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 let all heaven 
Nadia proclaim kings and kingdoms and kings and kingdoms they'll all pass away but there's something about For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice in praise. Is your the Lamb upon the throne? For you are glorious to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the the Lamb upon the throne, for you are glorious and worthy to be praised, you're the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. tonight empower them Lord heal their bodies and we will give you the glory and all the praise and all the majesty Amen you may be seated Chad, I hope we are sharing this already. Good. I want to welcome everyone watching online. In fact, I'm sharing it myself with our people because I believe that people need healing around the world. And I want to begin because I really want to lift your faith. You know, faith comes by hearing. And today, not many people, sadly, in certain places, even mention that God heals. And it's a shock that even pastors are dying too young and losing their ministries. Some are committing suicide because of mental illness. Our God is a healing God. 
And we should not forget the back of the cross. Yes, thank God for those and us too. We've been preaching salvation for years. The front of the cross is salvation. But the back, that's healing. With his stripes, we're healed. So we cannot just receive 50% of the benefits. Our God is a healing God. And we have to understand that the Bible is clear on that. Someone came to Oral Roberts years ago, and he told me that himself. Dear Oral was my neighbor for years. And I'd go see him sometimes twice a week as he got older. I went quite often. And one time he said, you know, he said this, this preacher came to him one day and said, I do not believe God heals. And they talked back and forth. And finally, Oral said, go get me a scissors. The man didn't know why. He said, just go find me a pair of scissors. So he came kind of puzzled. Why? And Oral gave it to him. He said, now every portion of the Bible that mentions God heals, cut it out. And the man said, well, I cannot do that. Why not? Well, if I begin cutting pieces out of the Bible, I'll be destroying the word. He said, that's exactly what you do. Every time you say, God does not heal. Because it's in the word. He said, anyone it says that he heals, just cut it out. Can't do that. So our God is a mighty healing God. I was, I was in, a, in a little town years ago, way up in Canada, called Spanish, Ontario. Now, Spanish, Ontario is about not too far from Sudbury. And a group, uh, I was to minister to a group of North American Indians. Now, that was the first time in my life with these dear people. Now, the North American Indians way up there are very serious people. They don't smile much or they did not back then anyways. And in front of me sat, I'd say seven, eight hundred of them. I was sponsored, you'd be surprised to hear that. The first people that sponsored me were Catholics. The Pentecostals didn't believe that God was using me. This was way back, we're talking 1974 and 1975, you know. So the... Uh, there was a great move of God in Quebec among the French Canadians and uh, some of these wonderful Catholic uh, people were having tremendous revivals in Canada. I was quite shocked one time. I, I, I showed up to one of their, of their meetings in, in Toronto and they were showing Catherine Kuhlman's film from Las Vegas and thousands of Catholics were in that room and I'm sitting there watching this movie with them, which I'd seen many times. So anyways, uh, and then the power of God hit. Uh, people were getting filled with the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues and all that. And the, at the end of the service, to my shock, they began praying to Mary. And I thought, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I thought, what are they doing praying to Mary? We just you know, saw the power of God move and people getting saved and people getting healed and filled with the Spirit and now, hail Mary, full of grace. I, am, I almost wanted to run out. And the Lord said, don't you dare, you stay right here. I said, Lord, but there, you know, I didn't like it. And the Lord said, you keep that with me. Don't, don't even touch it. And what was amazing is later, these same Catholics received by the Holy Spirit that it's not about Mary. The Lord himself told them. And I had a friend, I had a friend of mine named David Duplessis. Now, many of you probably never heard of him. He was known as Mr. Pentecost. He was a mighty man of God. And he ministered to Catholics, including the Pope himself, John Paul II. David ministered to the Pope, prayed for him if you want to really know, to, to receive the Holy Spirit. That's a fact. Anyway, so uh, one of the archbishops invited him to have a big meeting with all the Catholic hierarchy, and they asked him publicly about Mary. He said, I obey Mary every day. And they kind of were all happy about that. 
And they, and they all said, you, you what? He said, I obey her every day. She said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. <laughs> and, I, and I obey her every day. I do exactly what she says. Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And thank God, you know, he won many Catholics. But anyway, so I'm invited now by the Catholic Church to go preach in a very uh, forsaken part of Canada. <clears throat> and I had with me some Pentecostal preachers. <clears throat> I'll never forget to my dying day, the Catholic priest with the longest beard I ever saw in a human being. I'm not kidding you, before God Almighty, that man's beard went all the way down to his shoes. I'm not kidding. That beard just kept going, and I, I have no idea how he grew that thing. It was literally touching the shoes of that priest. So when he sat down, it was like out like a carpet, you know. And uh, there was about 10 of them sitting behind me, and two or three or so Pente Pentecostal preachers on the other side. So I'm preaching to these Indian people, sweet people, not one of them smiling, not one of them smiling, just staring. And, and I sang by myself. No, nobody even knew uh, any of the worship songs, like How Great Thou Art, or you know the beautiful songs we all sing. Not one of them in, even knew it. They knew some, I guess, songs they sang in their Catholic churches. So I'm just worshiping the Lord by myself. And I began preaching on Psalm 103. And I said, uh, God will heal all of you tonight. And, you know, I was in my 20s. I began preaching when I was 21. This had to be, I don't know, I was 23 years old, somewhere there. It was a brand new day for me, even with, with what God was doing in those days. So this, this, this guy starts coming up while I'm preaching. He was a cripple. His wife was with him, a little girl next to him, and a little baby in the mom's hand. And he's coming like this, walking up. He had a brace on, metal brace, and he's coming up very slowly like this. Well, you know, I didn't know what to do with him. In, in our meetings that we had in Toronto in those days and Buffalo and other places, the, the ushers would stop and say, can we help you? No ushers there. <laughs> Even the musician did not know what to play. God bless her. She was an old lady who kept mi missing the keys. Finally I said, it's okay. No need, you know, we'll do it without that. So this guy comes up, and he looks at me with his wife, his baby, his daughter, and he said, I'm a crippled man. I've been, he was 28 years old. He said, I've had an accident. He said, and my, 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 they told him his legs would never ever, uh, he would never like walk properly. And you can see all the metal braces on him. And he said, my wife has cancer. Our first baby died. And then he lifts the sleeve of the girl, his little girl, and it was bleeding everywhere, blood everywhere. He said, you came here to tell us that Jesus heals? Prove it. I said, Whoa. Never in my life did someone tell me to prove it like that. And I looked at those sweet people with lines in their faces. They all had big lines in their faces. They, they looked like rough people, big people. And they were just staring at me like not a soul even was smiling. I said, this is it. If God doesn't heal that, that man, I'm dead. It's over. <laughs> those people they don't look too happy. And so I looked at all those priests, I, Pentecostal preachers. I said, get down on your knees now. So they all got down on, on the knees, and I got down on my knees with them, and that man is still standing there waiting for my answer. Prove it. I looked up, I said, Dear Jesus, I'm preaching your gospel, not mine. I said, This man is telling me to, and I'm, I'm praying well, really loud. I said, This man is telling me to prove it. You prove it. <laughs> and when I said that, when I said that, we heard a big pow, and the man was on the floor. And his wife, and his baby, and his girl piled up. Now, what was so funny, I got to tell you what was so funny, is the Catholic priests were all whispering, and the Pentecostals were screaming <laughs> behind me 
Finally, I said, Shh. I said, God is not deaf. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and so, but it was a funny moment for me. But God has a sense of humor. This guy who had just come up saying, prove it, jumps up like a spring. <laughs> we heard a big thump. He jumps up, tears his, his uh, brace off, throws his crutches, runs down, uh, way down the aisle, comes back. He comes up screaming and jumping, and the mother starts freaking out. They pull the sleeve of the girl. Her skin was perfect. <laughs> now, I'm here to tell you, anyone who tells me God doesn't heal, it's too late. I've seen it time and time and time and time again. The first, listen, the first healing I ever saw was a lady in Pittsburgh in a Catherine Kuhlman service way before I was in the ministry. I just got saved when I was 19. Now I'm probably 20. I go down to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and myself and a guy named Al Perichin were responsible for this lady on the bus. A man named Jim Pointer used to take buses down from Toronto to Pittsburgh to see Catherine Kuhlman. And one of the first meetings I ever went to with us was this lady, guys. Now, believe me, I'm telling you the truth. May God strike me, okay? She was bent over like, like the hunch of Notre Dame. That woman was twisted, like, twisted like, like this, with arthritis. Short little thing. Her husband carried her purse. I'll never forget the guy, bald-headed, walking like this with his, with his wife's purse. And Jim says to myself and Al, he said, you help them up and down the bus when we stop for food or this or that. The drive from Toronto to Pittsburgh is seven hours non nonstop. But if you stop, it'll be at least nine or 10 hours. So think about being on a bus, nine hours, whatever, seeing this dear lady like this, and every time we stopped for food, we, you know, dear Al and I had to go and get the wheelchair from under the bus, because it couldn't be on the bus, so we had to take it out and pull it out and open it up and go up and, and take this little lady, put her in her wheelchair, put her in and all that, all day long. The next morning, same thing, we had to help her from the hotel to the bus to the service. It was a good Friday. And I will never forget, Syria Mosque, Northside Pittsburgh. Anybody from Pittsburgh knows that area. And here we are sitting, and by the way, she was witty. She was a witty woman. She said, hey, boys. She did this to us. She said, hey, boys. With her you know, crooked fingers, she did this. She said, <laughs> she said, don't you let the ushers see my wheelchair. They don't, they don't let wheelchairs on the, on, the, on the main floor, which we knew it already. Because Catherine demanded that all wheelchairs go to the basement. You know, some people weren't happy with that, but that's just the way she was. So she said, I don't want to be in the, in the basement. I want to sit on the main floor, so don't let them see my wheelchair. All right, we'll just carry you in. So we kept her wheelchair on the bus, and we carried her in, running down the aisle because everybody else was running. When those doors opened, people ran like they were in a race to get seats. So we're running, and, and dear Al and I are praying, Lord, blind those ushers, blind those ushers. Please, don't, don't, don't let them see us, because they, they would have probably said no. We put her down. By the time we are finished, the whole floor is packed. The only seats are on the balcony with our people who were walking very, very slow. Most of them were old, sweet people from, from Canada, and they couldn't make it too fast, so they had to go on the balcony. They couldn't run. Anyway, so we go, and the balcony came around and was right over the platform here and over there. Great seats, you know, right up top. So now we are sitting up there. Catherine just comes on the platform. She wouldn't, she hadn't even preached. She was extremely dramatic, like extremely dramatic. She looked like a ballerina coming on, you know, doing this with her dress and, you know, all that loveliness. Did you hear what I said? Okay. Anyways. <laughs> so she's leading in how great thou art, and she's doing her thing. And I was, you know, she was just very dramatic for me. 
first time I ever heard her, she said, hello there. Have you been waiting for me? I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, who is this? <laughs> that was on TV. She came on every morning on CBS, right, right after Day of Discovery with Richard DeHaan, she'd come on. Well, anyways, she's leading in how great thou art, and that woman we had brought in begins to do this. <laughs> she starts moving in her seat. This is before even anything starts. She starts. God begins to stretch her body in front of our eyes. Nobody laying hands on her. You that are sick, believe tonight it's going to happen here. They begin. Listen, listen. God begins to stretch her legs. Her whole body starts to do this. And I went nuts up there. I began hitting Jim. And all I could go was, ha, 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 ha. That's it. <laughs> You'd do worse. If, 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 if you were there and you saw that lady after 10 hours, the day before and a few hours the same morning, we, listen, we had to line up out the door by like four hours. And that poor woman was the whole, like, you know, whole, whole time like that. Now she's doing all this down there. And we're like, ah, 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 like this. Come on, you do the same thing and you know it. She stands up straight. Wait, wait. They bring her on the platform and Catherine says, what's this? And Jean Martin, a wonderful man who became a friend of mine later, tells her about this lady who was crippled with arthritis. And Catherine is just thrilled. Everybody's screaming up there. We're all crying. And Ms. Schumann is about to pray for her. I'll never forget this as long as I live. Ms. Schumann is, is about to pray for her. And this little lady was now straight like that. She says, Ms. Schumann, just a second. Well, what had happened is God straightened every part of her body except her little finger. Just this little finger. Nobody could see it except her. She said, he forgot the finger. <laughs> Imagine that. She wanted the whole thing. And Catherine said in her way, she said, oh, honey, I will not ask him to do that. He left it there that you might remember. <laughs> you would not believe the face of the bus driver. When that woman came back on the bus, that poor guy was like in shock. Because she was this the whole time, and now she's walking up with, by herself. The day, listen here, the day is here. Because the same God is the same yesterday, today, forever. He is still healing the sick. So let's begin believing again. Frances Scott was a woman in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Now, Sault Ste. Marie is across the way from Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. I'm preaching up there at a big high school. This woman, while I'm preaching, starts walking up the aisle just like that man in Spanish Ontario. And she too had a massive brace on her waist, metal connected to her shoes with pants over the metal. She was a bold, tall woman. Everyone knew her in town. So she comes up. And give me your chair a second. Stand up a minute. <laughs> Come here. She sits. Watch, watch your wire, oh. brother. Your whole wire is stirred up there. <laughs> she sits on my chair. I'm preaching. I'm ministering the word. Thousands of people in that high school auditorium. And she sits on my chair. <laughs> Like that. I thought, oh dear God, this is not exactly what I want to see. 
So I'm trying to preach, and here's <laughs> on my chair next to all the preachers. You see their leg like that. So I went up to her. I said, can I help you? She goes, and she had a voice like a man. She said, my leg. <laughs> now, those, those kids are loving this right down there. So I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, forgive me, you know, I don't want to really tell you a whole lot. But my kids make fun of those old tapes of me. I wasn't that nice. My kids used to say, Daddy, you were rude. I wasn't rude, I was just Benny. I was just the guy from Jaffa. You gotta understand, I come from, a, from the wild, wild east. So I said, take that thing off. Because I could hear the metal, you know, my leg. I said, well, take it off. I screamed at her. Because I was already mad with the thing, you know. So she stares at me like, well, I'm not thinking clearly that for her to take it off, she'd have to take her pants down. <laughs> Forgive me, I mean, I was, I was just starting. Come on, please. <laughs> I'm almost 70 now. I was 23 then, so be patient with me. So, and I'm, come on, take that thing off. And she just stared. Now, finally, a group of women come running up. There was nowhere to go, nowhere. Just a little curtain back there. So they stood around the curtain. They surrounded that lady with the, this and that. And she took, well, nobody saw it, thank God, you know. So all we heard is a big scream when her foot touched the floor. I like a big scream, big scream. I did not know it. Had, had she told me this, I would have never said anything. She had no bones. There was no bones in her legs. She had the brace, brace on both legs, holding the shoes. Doing this. And nobody knew, and I didn't know. She had no bones. When her foot touched the floor, the bones, God literally gave her bones. She was screaming. She tore everything off, comes back, tells the police the whole story. A revival broke out in that city. They had a football game. They canceled it. Never in my life have I ever had a football game canceled for me. But they canceled it for the Lord, not me. Because there was a lady in that service that had a big daily talk show in Sault Ste. Marie that announced it to the whole city. She said, you better go see that evangelist. All those Catholics showed up. There was such a revival that the hospital, St. Joseph Hospital in Sault Ste. Marie, all the Catholic nuns had me come and pray for the sick in the hospital. There was some service praying for the sick in that hospital was something else. God is still the same. He hasn't changed, people. Why am I telling you this? To lift your faith. Because some of you are saying, oh, you know, I have this, I have that. He is bigger than your problem. So watch this for just a few minutes, okay? Now this is going to really bless you guys. And you need to sing the song you're going to hear on this thing. Okay, so do you guys have it ready? Push the button. This dear lady had to be in a wheelchair. Why? Because she's had a tumor on the brain. Last night, the power of God flowed into her body. She was healed, went home and threw up. These ladies said she was just throwing up the poison. Tonight, the miracle happened completely. Now, look what God has done for her. Got a bad report. 
sports, and I never been to your uh, conventions, but my two sisters had, and I said, I got to get to Benny Hinn's convention. And they said, we'll take you. So we're from New Mexico, and they, they came, and they brought me. Well, she called it convention. It's all right. Crusade, but it's, it's the same. It doesn't matter. The Lord, now, why you got this thing on your, on your forehead? Uh, that shingles, my blood platelets have dropped and dropped again, and plus chemo and medicines and who knows what. Now, what did you throw? What did you say she threw up? Pastor, last night she came. Power of God began to flow in her body. The weakness was still there. You know how we emphasize the verse. They shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Right. God touched her last night. She went home and threw up. These ladies who are banding together in faith said, you're just throwing up the poison. Tonight, God completed the work. She's been running. If she had done that, if she had done that, she was very weak, came in, couldn't walk. Yeah, and she's been running, yeah, running the aisles, praising and magnifying God because the Lord, Lord has worked a miracle. Jesus, you're so wonderful, Jesus. Take your seats, please. Jesus. That lady forgot her shoes. No, oh, you're still there. Come on, honey. Put them back on. Put them back on. I'm so glad I came to Atlanta, Georgia. I'm just so glad. Next time I come, I'm coming to Alabama. Your presence. That's close by to Atlanta, so you can come, you know. Thanks. Pick up that, 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 those ladies. When we've gathered in your name, you promise to be with us. What? It's all over me. I know, and there's more of it coming. There's more of it coming. Pastor? Yeah. I must tell you, in August, they gave her two weeks to live. What? In August, they gave her two weeks to live. The devil is a liar. What the doctor says, no, Jesus says, the yes. The devil is a liar. All the time. I said, the devil is a liar. If his lips are moving, he's lying. Just one more time, sing it for me. Come on. When you're up against the struggles. Yeah. That shatters all your dreams. When your hopes and your dreams cruelly crushed by Satan's manifested scheme. And you feel the urge within you to submit to every fear. Don't let the faith you're standing in seem to disappear. Praise the Lord. He can work with those who praise him. Praise the Lord. For our God in heaven's praise. Praise the Lord. Change that seem to bind you serve only to remind you they'll drop powerless behind you when you pray. Satan is a liar. You bet he's a liar. Satan That's, is a liar. Come on, say it. He's a liar, people. Satan he's a liar. Is a liar. He's a liar. Satan is a liar. When he tells you you've got two weeks to live, when he knows himself, you're a child. You're a child of the king. So live up the mighty shield of faith. For the battle is already won. We know that Jesus Christ is risen. Never again. She'll never, never have it again. Never again. And the people said. And tonight is your night. This is your night. Hallelujah.
and hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God's people said, Amen. Now be seated. Is your faith high? Yes. Keep it there. All right. Oh, my goodness, I feel this. I just did this to wake you up. Lord, I thank you for what you'll do tonight. Say, Amen. Amen. All right, now, listen. There's a stream of God's divine healing virtue about to flow into this room. And I want you to know that stream will heal every disease, every sickness, every pain, every mental problem, because the Lord has given us his promise and made full provision. I mean, full provision. Therefore, there's absolutely no sickness, no disease, no physical, mental affliction, no nothing that can stand in his way. And all we have to do is believe. Because the same God who healed millions already in the last 2,000 years that has not changed. What did Jeremiah say? He said, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. There's nothing, nothing too hard for me. Why am I telling you this? I want your faith higher than ever. And we need to believe the word. Because if we don't, we don't get it. Now, we have to claim the promises by faith. We have to act on them by faith. We have to believe that God's power will be released today. Unlimited power. He sent his word and healed them in Psalm 107 and he delivered them out of all their troubles. Not one was left. What did, what, what did Jesus say in Mark 9, 23? All things, not just some, all things are possible to him that believes. Now, from the very beginning of God's dealings with his people Israel, think, he took him out of Egypt, declaring himself to be deliverer. They crossed the Red Sea, and they came to Mara, and God declared himself to be their healer. Their deliverer is now their healer. And that was the beginning of their journeys. But later we see something powerful. We see that God, after giving them the commandments, so he declared himself, I am the God that healeth thee, in Exodus 15. Now God gives them the law, and what does he say to them? He says, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. In Exodus 15, I am the God that healeth thee. In chapter 23, I'll take sickness away from you. He repeats the covenant. He repeats the promises. And now 40 years go by. They're about to go into the promised land. And God repeats the covenant again. In Deuteronomy chapter 7. You have to follow the journeys of the people of God. They come out. I'm your healer. After the law. I'm your healer. Before they get in. I'm your healer. He repeats it. If you look at Deuteronomy 7, God says, I will remove all sickness from the midst of you. And I will lay that disease on your enemies, not on you. The time has come we have to believe. It is his word. And Israel acted on the promise. 
acted in such a way that in Psalm 105 it says, not one, not one was feeble among them. Nobody even had a toothache. Nobody had to go to see a doctor or a dentist or a psychiatrist. Not one feeble. Three million people. Not one. Why? Because the promise works. Think about what I'm telling you. Now, you know, sickness came to Miriam when she came against her brother. Leprosy struck her. Moses prayed for her. God healed her. He was still healing his people. Even though Miriam came against Moses. Moses prayed for her and God heard him. And you think about time and time and time again when they sinned against God. In Numbers 21, they sinned and snakes came and bit them all. And now they cry, Lord, help us, you know, we sinned, we sinned. What did God say? To Moses, he said, you build a brazen serpent, you put that on a pole. And anyone who goes to that hill and looks, they'll be healed. The people went. By looking, they lived. By not looking, they did not live. How simple it, it is just to look. Whosoever looks will live. Time after time after time, God healing his blessed people. Now, I want to say something here to all of you. This, this amazing, all-powerful God. Who spoke the worlds into existence. Who breathed life into man. That same God came to save us and heal us. And this same God is eternal. Cannot change. There's no such thing as a day of miracles. There's a God of miracles. And he does not change. And the Bible is very, very, very clear that divine healing is a part of the plan of God. Divine healing, forgiveness are twins. It's as easy to get healed as it is to be forgiven. Think about that. It's by faith. How easy is it to say, Lord, I'm sorry, and you're forgiven. Just as easy to say, Lord, I give you my body. The reason people are not healed is because they are not giving God their disease. Listen to me. Whatever you give him, he'll fix it. You have to give it to him. When you give him your sin, he'll cleanse you. When you give him your weakness, he'll strengthen you. Well, why don't you also give him your disease? Surely he bore, he bore. Achen, Hebrew says, surely. It's even stronger than surely. It's like so, so assuredly, so verily. So absolutely took our sickness. That word in the King James is not grief. It's disease in Hebrew. Chole, disease. And you took our pain, makob, not sorrow. He bore it upon him. How easy it is to receive. You see, healing is not a man-made doctrine. Healing is the flow of God's life. That's his life. And when we receive his life, healing will happen. 
And all we have to do is act. Accept it by faith. Don't question it. Don't try to reason it. Just accept it. A lady named Rita Lacour, MS. She was in her 40s on a wheelchair, told she'll never, ever be free from MS. Never heard the name Jesus in her Catholic church. Never. A lady named Mrs. Champagne, whom I knew, and I knew both of them, had gone to see Miss Kuman and saw the part of God. And hundreds upon hundreds of French Canadians were getting healed in Pittsburgh through Catherine's ministry, coming back, telling their friends. And dear Rita had been on that wheelchair so long. Her children, her husband, no one took care of them. And she looked at her husband, Jock. She said, I want to go down to Pittsburgh. He said, why? They tell me there's a woman down there that prays for the sick. Oh, no, he said, I will not go down there. That's a long drive from Quebec City. It is a long drive. Well, after a few days, she just won't give up. And finally, he said, all right, I'll take you. They drove hours and hours. It's at least 10 hours from Quebec to Toronto, dear Lord. That's another seven, eight hours to Pittsburgh. They get to the service, they cannot get in. At First Presbyterian Church, right there, downtown Pittsburgh, by the William Penn Hotel, still there. And couldn't get in. An usher finds Rita crying outside the building on her wheelchair. He hears the story. He says, listen, you come in and I'll give you my, my seat. So he puts the wheelchair way in the back so nobody can see her under the balcony. Now there's Rita sitting there and she told me that story more than once. I had her on This Is Your Day and blessed all of us. She thought to herself, this woman must be paying people money to come up there and say that. Because they were coming up saying, I'm healed, I was healed of this, healed of that. But then she thought to herself at the end, no, no, there's no way they can all lie. Too many people coming up saying the same thing, they're healed. They can't all be paid to say that. And finally she looked up, almost the end of the service. And she said, Jesus, I never talked to you. Never once did she even speak his name. And then she said, the priest never told me about you. I don't know you. And I think this line is a sweet line, she said. But I know your mother. It's a simple faith. I don't know you. My priest never mentions your name. I know your mother. Now, if you're really the healer, as this woman says, she's pointing at Catherine now. Heal my body. I give it to you. And she felt heat go through her body. She pulled on her husband. She said, Chuck, Chuck. Something is happening to my body. He said, oh, be quiet. They're going to throw us out. Don't make a scene. She said, I'm telling you, something has happened to me. Be quiet, be quiet. She said, there's only one way to find out. Stood up, never went back in that wheelchair. The God that made that promise in Exodus 15 healed a woman who did not even know his name. 
No different than John 5. When the Lord came to the pool of Bethesda. And a man who did not know his name was healed. The Lord's favorite question. Will thou be made whole? Think about that one. That man who'd been waiting to step into the pool and couldn't get in. Now, think about this. Let's say this is you. A man comes up to you. You don't know him. You never seen him. You had never heard his name. And he says, will you be made whole? And then he says, get up and walk. That man could have said, no. I'm not going to get up and walk. I don't know who you are. By what authority do you tell me? Get up and walk. But he believed, even a stranger. He didn't know it was the, the Son of God. We all know the story. He was healed completely by obeying a simple instruction. Get up and walk. He did. This wonderful Jesus is still the same. He has not changed. Take my word for it. But more than that, take his word for it. Never will he change. He is still our wonderful great physician. I don't care what the doctors have said. We all honor doctors and believe in medicine. I do too, of course. But it doesn't matter what they say. It's what he says. Now, Isaiah 53 says clearly, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace. Come sit down. And with his stripes, I was watching a documentary a few weeks ago, and I saw when the Romans whipped him, they used metal on those, on those whips. That according to the people who study the Shroud of Turim, those were heavy metals, not small little round metals, because his organs, her, the Lord's organs were shattered. According to them, We sometimes don't think, don't realize the sufferings he went through for our healing. Think for just a minute. In Gethsemane, his blood comes out of his sweat because of the pressure. The enemy was trying to kill him. Resisting against sin, the Bible says in Hebrews. His robe stained with blood as he goes to the house of Caiaphas. And now they beat him. They buffet him. They pull his beard off, fulfilling Isaiah 50. And when you read this most remarkable prophecy. Sometimes I think people just don't pay attention to the words of this most remarkable portion. And I want you all to hear this. Dear Lord, I give you the praise for this. I gave my back to those who struck me. My cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. You read this amazing book of Isaiah. And you read portions that are more than amazing. More than amazing. As many were astonished at thee, Isaiah 52, 14. His visits so marred more than any man, his form more than the sons of man. No man was beaten like that. 
You read Psalm 22. His bones were exposed. He said, I can count all my bones. They literally tore his body apart. That's why we read broken body. Take eat my broken body. So not only did they beat his face in the house of Caiaphas, pull his beard off, marred his face, disfigured his face, so he could not even be recognizable as a human being for us. Then now he's in the praetorium in front of Pilate and his soldiers. And they whip him with such rage, demonic rage, in fact. They tear his flesh off. That's why it says his form more than any man was marred. On that cross, his body was torn. Torn before he ever made the cross. For our healing. And we don't want to believe it. We're rejecting his offer. Rejecting his pain for our disease. Why? Well, I just don't accept it. It's my tradition. It's my theology. Regardless of your tradition, it is God's will. Everything required for you has been done, accomplished, to be healed. Because it says, Jesus paid in full. The price is paid in full. I'm sure I'm talking to someone tonight who who just heard from the doctor. And you're frightened. Your disease is going to die tonight. Jesus did not lay his life down, carry your sin, take your disease, suffer shame, suffer agony, for you to receive just 50% or 75%. He paid a heavy price. It's freely offered to you. Will you accept it? Of course you will. So our faith must be fixed, not on theology or tradition, but the promise of God. We have to begin to believe his report now. Bible Randell healed of cancer in OCC. Real estate woman, she's still alive in Tampa. She was dying. Came to OCC, was healed. Went back to her doctor, he said, it's all in your mind. She said, I rebuke your words and I break them. He said, what? She said, I break your words. It's not in my mind, I'm healed. My color is back, my strength is back, my hair is back. What do you mean, it's in my mind? He said, there's no such thing as healing. She said, I'm no longer your patient. You're just an instrument of the devil. And walked out. She's still healed. Because she would not accept someone telling her it's in your mind. You see, the devil fights your faith. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. If you cannot accept the word of God, you'll be ruined. Not just about disease and sickness, about life. If we did not believe the Bible, where would we be? With anything in life. No. The word of God is our life. 
There's nowhere to go. To whom shall we go? You have the words of life. That's why we, don't, we do not fear death. Because the word of God says, when you're absent from your body, you're with the Lord. I walked in on Suzanne and her sister Leanne and her sister Liz and her mom Pauline when their daddy went to be with the Lord. I was in Indonesia. I come back and I see Suzanne, Leanne, Liz and Pauline and their uncle Paul sitting staring at an open casket by themselves in some, some place down here in Orlando. And they looked so sad. I said, get over here, come here. I said, that's not your dead. That's his tent. What are you doing crying over a tent? They all came alive. That's what the Bible says. It's a tent. Read that in 2 Corinthians 5. It's only a tent. People cry about a tent because they don't know the Bible. It's a glove. It's an earth suit. That's all you have. The body is your earth suit. And one day your earth suit will get so old it won't look that good on you. <laughs> so God wants you free from the earth suit because he has another one in glory for you. That's why we sorrow not as others that have no hope. When people lose loved ones, oh, I lost my loved one. I didn't lose mine. I know exactly where my mom is. I didn't lose my dad. He's in heaven. I know exactly where he is. When my daddy went to be with the Lord in 82, he was 58 years old. If I did not have the Bible, I would have been gone. Because my mom and family were blaming God for killing him. They were young Christians. How can God take him home? How can God allow it? I said, Mom, he smoked all his life. <laughs> and smoking will cause cancer, Mom. And God won't come out. You know, he, he will not come along and pull the cigarette out of your mouth. Dad enjoyed the cigarette. That's why he could not stay alive. God had nothing to do with it. Oh, they got really mad at me. But I was rejoicing and praising the Lord in that home, in that funeral home. Because I know what the Bible says. Finally, I convinced all of them to stop it. I said, Dad is in heaven. Stop it. And I remember Corrie Tim Boom preaching about the glove and the hand years before that. Where she, where she said, your hand is the Lord and the glove is you. And how you have to surrender to the, to, to the hand and then you can do anything with the glove. God released me when I looked at my dad's body and God said, it's only a glove. Man, I was free like that. So our loved ones don't go to the casket. They're not in the grave. Why are you going there putting flowers? Stop wasting your money. It's a glove, people. It's a glove. It's an, it's an old suit. Do you bury your suit and go put a flower on it? The Bible says that ye sorrow not even as others that have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. There is no death to the believer. Look, the body is not dead. It's sleeping. Why are you crying if it's sleeping? Concerning them which are asleep, Jesus said, Lazarus is asleep, let's go wake him up. And he said, well, if he's sleeping and wake up, then he had to finally explain why he said that. 
A dad he walked into a funeral home with his wife and he saw the little boy in the casket. And the dad said, goodbye son, goodbye forever. The mom kissed that little boy. She said, I'll see you in the morning, baby. I'll see you in the morning. That's our faith. Where would we be without the Bible? Messed up. I'm here to tell you. I don't care what disease is in your body. God is a healer. So enough of this. Oh, will God heal me? Oh, Lord, help me now. Why, why, why? Whatever you did to mess it up, he'll fix it. He'll fix it. He'll fix anything. Just give it to him. I tell the story about my son, Joshua, and sometimes my family doesn't like it. But when he was a kid, I bought him a nice truck with all the remotes and all the, all the stuff. He was too young for the little remote. He, he was too little to understand. You have to push this and push this and push that. So he got so mad and he smashed that thing. Big truck. Destroyed. He brings it to me with all the broken pieces. He was only five or six years old. He looks, Daddy, fix it. <laughs> I wanted to say, well, I can't fix it. You broke it so bad. I said, no, I better not because I'll destroy his faith. He looked so trusting. Fix it. So I did. I just bought him a new one. <laughs> Never told him. As that face was so trusting. Fix it. That's all we have to do. Come up to our Heavenly Father. Fix it. And he'll fix it. He doesn't have to go get you a new one. He'll just fix it. What a mighty God we serve. Think about the times after time after time God healed his people in the Old Testament. Wow. For this purpose, 1 John 3, 8, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the devil's power. And sickness and sin are the result of the fall. But thank God, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Whatever disease, it'll be gone in Jesus' mighty name. By his wounds, we are healed. And the Bible says he healed them all. I want to paint something for you. I want to paint something for you. Now, Bruce, you be real good back there behind me. <laughs> Just let the Lord lead you, brother. Let the Lord now lead you. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord my healer you sent your word healed my disease you are the Lord my healer I think about I think about Matthew chapter 4 and I think about verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. And it says, he healed all of them. And then that crowd followed him up to a mountain and heard the most amazing sermon blessed are the poor in spirit and every time I, I see that 
I think how the Lord healed these people before he fed these people. Wow. Here you have the most re remarkable uh, story in the Bible. Just heavenly. He's sitting on a hill. C can you just lift your hands a minute? Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment. I feel the winds changing here and his blood hath made me whole. Can you just give me your attention for a moment and look at me a minute? I just felt something change would you for a moment see this man from Galilee sitting on that mountain top tall wide shoulders long beautiful brown curly hair eyes of love his face full of peace and love. And you see that crowd there listening to him. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are you when all men say all men are evil against you. And that crowd is sitting there healed already. He goes down from that mountain and there comes to him a leper. Looks up, Lord, if it's your will. And Jesus cleanses him from leprosy. Now he's on the way to the house of Simon Peter. And the centurion's servant comes and says, My master has sent us. His servant is sick. I'll come. Now we have to remember that Jesus began healing the sick in Matthew 4. He'd been preaching all that morning after healing all the crowds. Just healed the leper. And now... It's early evening. He says, I'll come. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. The servant is healed. He goes to the house of Simon Peter. There's a crowd there waiting. He heals them all. In the house and outside the house. Now, nighttime, he goes on a boat. A storm rages at night. They wake him up. Be still. He goes to Gadara. It's early in the morning now, the next day. And a demoniac comes running down that hill. And he sets him free. That demoniac could not come to the miracle service yesterday. 
So Jesus went to where he was. My brother, if you cannot come to him, he'll come to you. Because that's the master. He knows about your troubles. And he sets that man free from all those devils. He gets in the boat, goes back to Kapanam. And blind man meet him. He heals them. Never stops healing the sick. It is his nature to heal. Or the time when he was sitting on that hill in Galilee. And they brought to him all the lame and the maimed and the blind and the deaf. Can you just picture that in your mind? Jesus sitting on a rock. Striking and majestic and powerful and peaceful. Such glory on him. The Bible says when they saw him, they were amazed. Just amazed. Can you see the sick coming up that hill? Someone carrying a, some crippled man, another carrying a child who's blind. Another carrying an old man who's crippled. Another helping an old woman, a mother. They cast them at his feet and he healed them all. But one of my favorites, one of my favorites, there comes a knock one day. Lydia, get up, Lydia. They say that was her name with the issue of blood. A neighbor came and said, Lydia, they say the man from Nazareth is about to pass by your door. Get up, Lydia. He may never pass that way again. This is your moment. And Lydia gets herself already gets out of the door and sees a crowd looks way down there and she sees the man from Galilee and she says if I can only touch the hem of his garment I'll be healed and she crawls she crawls and someone's leg hits her there and someone's foot t steps on her little frail hand. She bleeds here and bleeds there, dust flying in her face and covering her clothing. And she comes with a trembling hand and touches the hem of his garment. And she's made whole. Lift your hands. And oh, the joy that floods my soul because something always happens and now I know he touched me and made me Oh, I want to hear that violin here. And he touched me. Sing it with me. Oh, he touched me. Stand up and declare it. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. Something happens and now I know he touched me and made me Just a whisper. He touched 
me Sing it with me Oh he And all the joy That floods my soul Something always happens when Jesus comes is passing by just like with Lydia Jesus is passing by just reach out and touch the hem of his garment right now Jesus is Passing by, call his name. Jesus is passing by. Reach out and touch the hem of his garment right now. Lift your hands to him, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, your Oh, 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 oh. 
hear the sound of heaven like the sound of many waters the sound of worship coming from the throne there are cries of adoration as men from every Lift the voice to make his glory known. Oh, that anointing is here now. Singing home, 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 home. to the Son of Man. His eyes were a flaming fire, his hair white as wool, his appearance brighter than the sun. When I saw him, I fell as a dead man. And he laid his right hand upon me and saying, Fear not, John. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Wonderful Jesus, adore Him now. Express. 
presence of God here. Jesus is here. Just a whisper now. Hallelujah. Those sick, place your hands on that sickness. If you're sick in body, place your hand now on where the sickness is. the sickness is all over your body place your hand just on your body as I pray and you continue to worship the Lord will touch you you said Lord he was wounded for our transgressions Bruise for our iniquities, chastise for our peace. The stripes we are healed. Once again, Hallelujah. for our healer. And I step into my office. I command every disease to go. I command every sickness to go. In Jesus' name. Be gone. In His holy name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, receive. The anointing is here. Call upon his name, whisper his holy name, and as you do, you'll feel his mighty anointing. glorious there's an asthma just been healed I rebuke that in Jesus name someone's back has been healed I rebuke that in Jesus name every one of you just lift your hands and lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost 
someone's leg over here to my left has just been healed. You had a lot of pain in that leg. Arthritis in the hips, way back there, has been healed. A bleeding ulcer, I rebuke it. An infection in the throat, I rebuke it. Someone to my right with that infection in the throat, keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Someone had a neck injury recently. You had a lot of pain in your shoulders as a result. Not only your neck, but your shoulders. You felt like a warmth came over you. Many of you feel, even now, a beautiful warm sensation on your body. Others of you felt earlier like a tingle, like electricity, gentle electricity flowing through your body keep praying someone with a kneecap the doctor said you need surgery no the Lord has just healed you that somebody with that knee problem you also felt a warmth come on that leg the Lord has healed it completely someone with a circulation problem is being healed somebody with a circulation problem an ear infection don't wait for me to call out your healing please lift your hands and ask the Lord to heal you he will not reject you I promise you he is our precious healing Savior a shoulder injury has been healed I give you praise a skin problem has been healed I give you praise someone with an ankle swelled you have swelling in the ankle the, the, the swelling is, is going down a lot of people are being healed watching this all over the world if God has healed you if the Lord has healed you keep praying sweet people if the Lord has healed you and you know it and you, 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 you know it do something you could not do before just do something now and, and, and check it out Keep praying, people of God. If the Lord has healed you, quickly get out of your seats and come line up over there to the left. If the Lord has healed you, come out of your seats, line up right over there to the left of, of, the, of the stage. Everyone just keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Lift your hands and keep praying. The, 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 the healing anointing is flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing. A muscle condition also has been healed. If God has healed you, just come and stand over here on the side. Come quickly, stand over there on the side. Don't stay in your seat, otherwise you could lose that healing. Even if I don't talk to you, even if I don't uh, speak to you, you just come and stand right here. It's important you come and stand right over there. Everyone lift your hands and pray in the Spirit. Come on. Let them through, let them through, let them through over there. There's a lot of healings, a lot of healings, a lot of healings. Can we give my, my Jessica a microphone? Can we give her a microphone? Keep praying, keep praying. I see some, I see some uh, young lady with troubles uh, with your stomach, something to do with your stomach. You just feel heat all over the stomach right now. Jesse, honey, what happened to the, to the, just keep them right down there. Let me just hear she it first. She has psoriasis on her skin and it's all gone. It's a skin infection. Come here, darling, come here. You, Jesus, you're glorious. Just stand right there, darling. All of you, lift your hands up in this, in the, Holy Spirit, you had problems with your skin, young lady, you had troubles with your skin. How bad was it? Okay. Touch on top of her head to the soles of her feet. Every part of it goes. Every part of it. Jesse, honey, what, what happened? 
She dislocated her shoulder and she just took off her brace. There's the pain is gone. <laughs> Now, pray just a few minutes more. Lift your hands and pray. What, what happened to her, baby? She had pain in her ankle and all the pain is gone. Yeah. You called it out. And oh, the glory. Ryan, a new anointing. There's an, another position. Another position. We are temple. Give your reverence. I see another position, another step up. You feel heat on your chest. What happened, babe? She had asthma. You called it out and the pain oh, is gone. Asthma. You asthma. called it out and the pain is gone. Yeah. She felt fire in her chest. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's people here. Please. She had colitis and she was in a lot of pain and the pain is leaving. And come here. One more time, Jesse. Colitis and she was in a lot of pain and the pain is getting less and less. In her tummy. In, in, yeah, in this area. Lord. There's somebody with an with a with an ear infection that was healed a little while ago. Check your check your hearing. You can hear everything. Pick her up. This great anointing on her. Michael, come stand beside me, honey, please. See where that guy is right there with the yellow the yellow shirt there. Yeah, someone right in in your area is being healed of a problem right here in the in the hip area. I, I don't know if it's you or someone behind you, but that anointing is very strong right there for that. I, I don't know who you are, but just receive that healing. You've had that problem in your hip, right in front of your hip. Thank you, Lord. Now come stand with me. Lord, I give you praise. Just one more time, saints. Lift your hands to heaven. Shh. Holy. Holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy. Jesse, come up here. The elders and angels are the redeemers. One more time. Holy, 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 holy. Real gentle there, Bruce. Holy, holy, holy. Now 
now there's something happening now here. The elders and angels. Hold on to me. The redeemed. Strength. Lord Jesus. Give them strength. Holy, holy, holy. Now, Lord, they're your servants. They're your servants. You chose them. You chose them. Let them know your strength. Spirit, soul, and body. Strengthen them. In the inner man, strengthen them deep in their soul. Quicken their bodies to serve you. Give them longevity of life. Open mighty doors. Do with them what you have never done with me. Way more, way more, way more than they can believe for. Exceeding abundantly above all they can even believe or think. All I've seen, Lord, you know, my lifetime, just the beginning. Just the beginning. They'll see greater. Much greater. Much greater. Only my ankles got wet. Only my ankles got wet. But let the waters they walk in go higher than that. Way higher than that. And I thought surely I could see no greater. But the greater is coming with Michael and Jessica. Now, Lord, I commit them to you. With all my heart, I commit them to you. And my darling Theo, my darling Benny, my darling Sophia, they're yours. Let their path be bright brighter than they'll ever know. Yes, Lord. Lily too. David too. Judah and Josiah too. Yes, Lord. For your glory. For your glory. We give you our families and loved ones that you'd use every one of them. Theo, and Josh, and Tosh, every one of them. We belong to you, Lord, to none else. We belong to no one else but you. Thank you for this beautiful service in this moment. Give me the praise. Oh, what the Lord is showing me about you both will amaze you. But I'll tell you privately. I'll tell you privately. But as we stand here in this holy moment, as we stand in this holy moment, many of you tonight, you're not ready. Your life is full of confusion. Maybe some troubles in your soul maybe a sin that you cannot be free from the word declares where the presence of the Lord is there is liberty and it's now if you truly want liberty from that sin 
liberty from that oppression in your soul, come to Jesus. Just come to Jesus. Because where he is, there is no oppression. Where it stands, there is no bondage and sin. Only light. Only life. I want to pray for you before I walk off this platform under the anointing. Every one of you that wants to surrender now, now, get down here as quickly as you can and kneel or stand in front of this platform. This is not the time to hesitate. This is not the time to question. This is the time to come and say, Jesus, I come. Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming home, Lord. I come to you where I belong. Away from the world and away from sin and away from self and away from the flesh. I come. I'm tired. I'm tired of the world. I'm tired of the bondage I've had to fight all these years. Set me free, Lord. I give you my life. I give you my life. It's a holy moment here right now, saints. Lift your hands to heaven and thank him for this. Come unto Jesus. Give him your life today. Come unto Jesus. Let him have his way. David, come take a microphone, help me. Come unto Jesus. Give him your life today. Come unto Jesus. Let him have his way. Sing it with me, David. Come unto Come on Jesus. Give him your life today. Come unto Jesus. Let him have his way. Now all of you in, in the audience too and all the people here, just say, Dear Jesus, out loud say, Dear Jesus, I'm tired. I'm tired of the world, the bondage, and all that's in it. I really need you. I need you now. I need your peace, your love, your acceptance, your joy. And I come now, just as I am, and I surrender my life, my future, my all. Be my all. In all, my Jesus, my Savior, forever. Now, Lord, you heard what they said, and they meant it, and they mean it. Answer so that wonderful prayer. Peace that passeth all understanding forever. I have a word for that family right there, the third row. Is that your family? They're from Reading. Well, there's a tremendous future for them. Tremendous future. I don't even know who you are, I can tell you this. The light of God is on you. And your family. There's a precious future for your, your life and their life. And, and the Lord is going to use you 
to be a, a tremendous peace to a lot of people. I, in fact, I see oil of peace running through you. I don't even know how to say it. I say like oil of peace. Like everywhere you go, people get calm, there's peace. And especially from that, I, I don't know who, the one with the glasses. Oh, that's your wife. Well, get ready. Tremendous oil in you. You know, the Bible says uh, how when Elisha said to the woman, what do you have in the house? Oh, she has a pot of oil. God used that to change a nation. And God will use your oil in you that hasn't come out yet to change many, 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 many people. Be ready for it. I'm sorry, I thought you were one of the children, you look so young. <laughs> so Jessica, where are you? Come. Well, I'm done ministering, but I don't want you to use your voice. Isn't the Lord good? I, I tell you, I, I sensed, I, 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 I sensed the heaviness a glory like a, when I was praying for you guys I felt a glory something touched my head right here and I felt a weight and uh, this, God is planning a lot here really a lot so okay Lord I'll obey I, I'm, I'm supposed to, to quit no 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 don't touch them Lila come here David come here you know I, I'm just obeying the Lord honey that's all now, listen kids, when the anointing flows, I talk like this. If it's not flowing, I'm not talking. This is it. Like this is it. Till Jesus comes, this is it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Your vision, this vision. It's not a separate vision. And the Lord will bless you. I mean massively. Not many Timothys are around anymore. But God is raising you as a Timothy. Massive future. Massive tomorrow. That is such a strength in our day. And when you see families together, like I'm seeing, it's a, it's, a, it's a treasure. Treasure. So commit everything to them, to this. Everything. The past, shalom. <laughs> bye bye. It was only a step. It's only a step. The worship that you will bring here is going to take it a lot higher. And God is going to give you songs like he already has in the past but there'll be a new flavor a new melody you know the sound is changing in this church the sound is changing what I mean by that is before every move comes a different sound so last Sunday or was it the Sunday before when the quietness came last Sunday, last Sunday. And uh, dear Jackson, who attends your church now, over there, he was telling me about it. He said, it was so holy. He was crying the whole time. He, he said, I cried the whole time. That's what I mean by sound. Sometimes the sound is stillness. It's not about shouting or music. That's not what I mean at all, you know. A heavenly sound is heavenly. So when people think sound, they think earthly noise. No, 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 no. A sound is spiritual. What you're experiencing is a, is, is a new sound. I saw that with Miss Kuman. When quietness overwhelmed our souls with God's glory. Because it was a sound, a heavenly sound, you know. It's, it's, it's coming. Now, the, the, the explosion of it, maybe a better word, the intensity of it will not be in this building. It will be in the new building. So get that building quick. Build it 
pronto. Okay. I'm glad you're going to go to the high school now. The other one? Not for Sunday night. We're Sunday. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Baby, please. They don't get confused. I know Sunday night you're going to be here, but Sunday mornings you're going to that other place. To Lake Brantley High School. Right. So you're going to stay March there. March 6th. March 6th. Yeah. So it's, you're going to stay there till the new building. Yes. But I want to tell you, the glory of God in that new building will amaze everyone, even me. And I've seen it all. So you guys, that's why you're here. And one of your sons, one of your sons, I don't know which one. I told you when you got married, the ministry that God has for him. So take care of your babies. I know you do, you love them. But it's going to be some amazing future. So Amen. I love you. I, love you. I adore you. Thank you, you. You look wonderful. And now it's all yours. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dad. Let's just, why don't we just honor him real quick? We love you. Uh, what a beautiful night. Um, if you still want prayer, I'd love to invite. I, of course, if God is still touching you, you don't have to leave, but maybe we can get our prayer teams to come right here. We will help you guys. And then if you want prayer, you're welcome to come down to the altar. We'd love to pray for you. See you next Sunday morning and next Sunday night here. Bye. Hey everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing in the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that, we believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we wanna invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is gonna do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We're going to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County, right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program, yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything the location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for his people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. 
the gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus Image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. 
May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.